Hi, welcome to the Bridge Podcasts. We hope you enjoy the following message. For more information on all that's happening at the Bridge Church, please visit www.bridge-church.com. God bless you all today. Uh, So thankful to be here with you today. Thankful to be anywhere uh, today. And I just want to say in the beginning here, we are told to expect something good to happen in our life. So why don't we all expect a miracle today? Because we get what we are expecting. So if you expect a miracle, just maybe, you'll win God's lottery today and you'll get the miracle. Amen? God doesn't do lotteries, but he answers your expectation. So I'm so thankful that uh, in this new format, I'm able to come to you and, uh, and we can enjoy our time together wherever you are. So today I have a message, I believe it's from the Holy Spirit, and I believe that as I speak today, the Holy Spirit will speak to you where you are, in your life where you are, not just positionally where you are, but where you are in life today, and where you are in your uh, outlook towards what's happening, and God is going to touch you at the point of your need today. My mandate today is to bring our mandate for the last 33 years here in this community is to to bring a message of faith, hope, and love. We build our our faith, which gives gives us the hope for the future, and when we operate in love, then we can do all things because love conquers all. So I've entitled the message today, Fear Not, Fear Not. Uh, In the Bible, there's 365 times that God says, fear not. So there's a fear not for every day of the year, except for this year's 366 days, but you can take one of the other ones and just add it on, okay? So, I'd like to start off by making this uh, declaration that Jesus made. Uh, And Matthew says, when we were utterly helpless, when we were utterly helpless, we're in a place now where I'm, I'm in my 70s. I've never experienced anything like this before. My mother, who's 92 years old, has never experienced anything like this before. And obviously, she's uh, come through the Second World War, but never experienced such a restriction in her life. So we're in a new territory. And uh, we're in that place where we are utterly helpless, where we don't really know where, where we're where we're going to uh, go with this. The government is uh, basically in control of our lives at this this moment in time, and we are yielding to the government, which is correct, because the Bible says that we must obey our government in all things. So the Word goes on to say that when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time. So no matter what the situation is, no matter how far we're into into desperate situations, Christ will come at the right time and he will deliver us from that situation. And the Word of God says this in John 14, 27 and the NLT. I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or be afraid. So the peace is a gift from God. When you have that peace, no matter what storm, no matter what situation, no matter what happens in your life, the peace of God will surmount every anxiety that you have. So I'm going to read you a portion of Scripture here uh, from Matthew 6 and verse 25, uh, the Bible says, That is why I tell you, 
not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food in your body, more than clothing? We see that the first thing that happens in the natural realm when there is some sort of uh, situation arises that we're not in control of, people turn to their, their, their default setting is panic. And that's not the way that we should deal with it. When we get into that mode of panic or anxiety, we don't have clear thoughts. Our thoughts are no longer uh, focused on where we want to be or where we're going or our destiny. Our thoughts are, are, are more on instant gratification. We've got, to, we've got to get this. We've got to get that. And uh, hence, we see that the shelves and shops are empty. People that are working in the uh, <clears throat> medical field and everything are, are not been able to get the the foods that they need because when they go, when they're released from hospital, etc., they're getting there and the shelves are empty. <clears throat> so that's why the the word tells us not to worry about everyday life, uh, whether you have enough food or drink. When we plan our lives, that's where God wants us to be in a place where our life is planned where we know what we're going to do, where we've planned our menus, we've planned what we're going In this time of social isolation, if we don't plan every day, can you imagine you have three children all at school in different years at school and you don't have their days planned out for them? Can you imagine uh, what's going to happen? Can you imagine if you haven't got your week planned out? It's going to be uh, chaos. So we need to have a plan. And with a plan, or actually, if we have a solution for a problem, we don't have a problem, we have the solution. And so our, our solution is planning ahead so that we can do all that, w that we are required to do in that time. And, and uh, my mom says in her 92nd year, she says, I feel like I'm in prison. Now, my mom's a, a mobile, uh, intelligent lady. And, uh, and she, even in her 92nd year, she goes, likes to go out almost every day she goes out. And now she's at home and she's not enjoying it at all. So... She needs something to do. She needs interaction. Everybody needs interaction. And I thank, I'm thankful that when I need interaction, I can go to the Lord for my interaction. The, the, the word goes on to say in verse 26, Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't, aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Well, when this virus hit, that proves that you can't add a single moment to your life because there's a, a virus that's been loosed in the world that's determining uh, the length of your life. And even now, uh, the, in, in the, the doctors are making determinations who to fight for and who not. So... The only thing is to be ready for the future. Uh, my, I spoke to my grandson last night in America. Uh, he's in Colorado. He says if they're, if they're going to shut the borders in Colorado, he's going to go back to Texas where his wife comes from. And he says that uh, people uh, are carrying guns around now and uh, they, they, they're so much anger that they may even use those guns. So he's decided to move so that he can be safe with his wife. So don't worry about these things, as the Bible says. Uh, verse 29 says, Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautiful as they are, talking about the lilies of the field and how they grow. 
And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, He will certainly care for you. God will certainly care for you. I've, I've been a Christ follower since 1980. I, I can tell you that for my wife and I and my family that we've enjoyed uh, the blessings of God for these last 40 years. So God will care for you when you put your trust in Him. Well, uh, I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll move on to something else soon with regards to understanding God's uh, hand in your life. So He cares about you. So why do you... Uh, the, 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 the next verse says, and, and if God cares so wonderfully, uh, why do you have so little faith? We need to increase our faith. You say, well, how do we increase our faith? We increase our faith by reading portions of Scripture like this. My son David just shared uh, some great Scriptures with you uh, from Second Chronicles. God's eyes go to and fro across the earth. He's looking for an opportunity to uh, cause His Word to come to pass in your life. In fact, God says, in 1 Kings 8.56, this scripture's not on the screen, but in 1 Kings 8.56, he says, not one word of his good promise has ever failed. Not one word of his good promise has ever failed. When God says something, he means what he says. So, don't worry. Verse 31 says, so don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he'll give you everything you need. Some, some of you watching this may say, well, that doesn't really mean much to me because uh, I, I don't do that God thing. But God is saying to you, if you will seek me. You see, when Jesus came into this earth, he came to, to create a body of believers called the ecclesia. And that means there's no denominations in, 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 in Jesus' eyes. Everyone is part of the ecclesia. And the, that word ecclesia means the body. And, and Jesus is the head of the body. And when we move away from those denominational titles and just focus on Jesus, then that's what the Word's talking about. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all of these other things shall be added unto you. And I'm sure as you've gone through life and you've had difficult times that there's been a a miracle in your life which you may have called a coincidence. But nonetheless, that was uh, God showing up in your life uh, with a God incidence that you called a coincidence. So when you seek God, and, and many of us, and I know I did it with, with my daughter when she was near death, I called out to God, Lord, if you'll just heal my daughter, I'll serve you every, other, every day of my life. But when my daughter was healed, I didn't serve him for some time after that until he brought that promise back to my remembrance. So many of us are like that, but when we move back to that place of seeking first the kingdom of God and start to live righteously, he'll give you everything that you need. What a promise. He will give you everything that you need. He will give you everything. The word everything is all-encompassing. He'll give you everything that you need. And as we read on, it says, don't worry about tomorrow. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. God doesn't want us to be worrying and be anxious about tomorrow. He wants us to think about getting through a day. At, at this time in, our, uh, in this country and the countries of the world, it's like, how are we going to get through today? Let's get through today. 
Let's take life a step at a time and get through each day as it comes. So that's where God wants us to be. Uh, walking through life, moment by moment, trusting in Him. But we've got to understand. Proverbs 3, 5 says this, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Don't depend on your own understanding. Our own understanding is made up of our perceptions, our own understanding is made up of things that we have uh, developed in life, uh, things that we've been taught from our parents, things that we've taught, been taught from friends, teachers, or whatever. We've formed our own perception or our own understanding of how life should be. But did you know that one of the biggest strategies for controlling people is misinformation and disinformation, which, which attacks your understanding. And once you pick up on misinformation or disinformation or false news or fake news or whatever it is, your understanding is, is corrupted. God doesn't want our, our understanding to be corrupted. We've got to lean on His understanding. Don't depend on your own understanding. Depend on God's Word that will bring us a fresh understanding. With God's Word, it's the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. When we rely on the truth, uh, His Word says in John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth shall make you free. So when you know the truth, then you can rely on His Word for understanding. And that understanding brings you to a place of strong faith. Let me just share a wee story with you about John G. Lake. John G. Lake uh, was an American lawyer. Uh, he didn't start off as an, a lawyer, but his dad took him one day to, to a lawyer's office, and at that lawyer's office, he saw this uh, oak door uh, with a big brass nameplate on it with the lawyer's name, and he saw, uh, when he went through the door, there was a big oak desk with a brass nameplate with a lawyer's name on it, and he got fixated in that, and he said, one day, I'm going to be a lawyer, and I'm going to have my own nameplate, and I'm going to have it on the door and on my desk. Well, he went through his studies and he became what he focused on. And the day he got his nameplate on the door and the nameplate on the desk, God says, I've given you what you want. Now I'd like you to give me what I want. I want you to go to Africa. So he gave up everything to go to Africa. He, he was married by this time, and his wife was going to come with him, obviously. And uh, she only wanted one thing. She says, I'll follow you wherever you want, where God tells you to go, but I want my rocking chair to come with me. He says, I'll do it. So he had no ticket, and he went to the shipping line, and they were getting on the ship, in the shipping line, he was given a ticket for him and his wife to go to Africa miraculously. And his wife was perturbed because here they were getting on the ship and there was no rocking chair. As they stood on the deck, looking over the deck of the ship, a horse and cart were, was riding up to the ship and on the back of the cart was her rocking chair. God takes care of your every need. When he got to Africa, it was South Africa, he got off that boat and was met by 14 men. And he says, you, they said to him, you're the man we've been waiting for. And they had a home prepared for him, everything. Anyway, the bubonic plague broke out when he was there. And him and his associate were burying all the dead people with, from that bubonic plague. And the doctors noticed that he wasn't getting sick. So they said, how come you're not getting sick and you're handling all these dead people? 
He says, whenever the, the saliva or anything germ touches my skin, it dies instantly. And, they, and he says, if you don't believe me, take me and put my, some saliva in my hand, put it under the microscope, and you'll see what happens. And they took saliva from a dead person, put it in his hand, they put it under the microscope, and they watched that virus die on his hand. You see, God will do things for you that, you, that are un, unexplainable, unexplicable, except in the supernatural. So when you trust God, lean not in your own understanding, but trust Him, He will do inexplicable signs and wonders in your life. I want to read one other scripture to you. Proverbs 3.13 says, Joyful is the person who finds wisdom and the one who gains understanding. When we find wisdom, we find joy and we gain understanding. When, when your joy is stolen, when your joy is robbed from you, your mind doesn't think right. You're, 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 you're just in a fluster. But when you have the joy and you can stay joyful, then you gain understanding. Uh, Isaiah 11.3 says, And Dave, my, my son David spoke about the seven spirits of God. One of those spirits is understanding. So you have the spirit of understanding. And Isaiah 11.3 says this, And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, so God wants us to be of quick understanding. If we understand the situation, if we understand the circumstances, then we'll have no problem with people uh, uh, obeying the word of God uh, and obeying the word of the land, uh, the law of the land, and they will exclude themselves. They'll, they'll be socially uh, responsible. And they will be socially responsible when it comes to everything else. They will understand that we all live in the world together and whatever they do has a, a reaction in other people's lives. So the message that I have for you today is that you would be of an understanding heart, that you would understand that God will never leave you, will never forsake you, He's always there with you, no matter what situation you're in, no matter what your circumstance. He has given you uh, all authority and power to pray and, and break the, uh, uh, the assignment of the enemy against this country and against the people of this country. So we've got to be strong in the Lord, not in our power, but in the power of His might. And as we're strong in the Lord, we'll get through this situation, we'll get through it, and we'll not only survive through it, we will thrive through it. We'll come out the other end still with our vision intact and the hope of His glory in our lives. Let's pray. Father, I thank You for this audience that's looking through the, the, their phone or whatever, iPad or TV, right now, Lord, I thank you for this audience. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I release the power of your Spirit, Father. I thank you, Father, that your people will have quick understanding. They will understand that uh, their actions at this time, Father, can change a nation. Their actions can change. When people see that they're not anxious, when people see that they're not stressed out, when people see that they still have joy, they will say, where are you getting that joy from? Where are you getting the strength from to get through this with such a good attitude? And Father, I thank you that people seeing that will say, I want to serve that God that you serve. I want to be part of that ecclesia. I want to be part of the living body of Christ. I want to be someone that is being led and guided by the Spirit of the living God. I want that power 
in my life. I want that power for my family. So, Father, I thank you for each and every person that is tuned into this today, Father. I thank you, Father, that they will experience the future that you have implanted in their heart. For your word says that you have a future, a hope, a destiny for each and every one of us. It's implanted in our heart. Father, I thank you for the release of that destiny in their heart in the name of Jesus, that they will focus on their destiny and focus on taking others to the place that they've been called to. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. God bless you all. Look forward to you tuning in again next week and following uh, the blogs that we, and the uh, Facebook Live and different things that we'll do on a daily basis to keep you uh, encouraged during this time. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Remember to visit our website, www.bridge-church.com and connect with us via Facebook and Twitter.